This trip surfers Mark Matthews, Richie Vass and Evan Fawkes travel across Australia from east to west to meet a wave of destiny, Cyclops. The break is situated on a little granite island on the outer fringe of the Great Australia Bight. Here the land is arid and snake infested and the water cold and sharky. It's where the desert meets the Big Blue, the Big Blue being the Great Southern Ocean. Granite islands cover the blue horizon. Yeah, it's just, it's just amazing to see. There's just no, nothing but natural landscape. There's not one, you know, man-made thing. So that's also gets you kind of worried when you're out there serving those kind of waves too. Lens guru Ted Grambo is on board to capture the boy's mission. Ted is well known in the surf world for roaming the planet in search of new surf locations. He knows Cyclops and the power and colour of the Great Southern Ocean can deliver some awesome photos. One of my favourite places, it's, it's isolated, it's beautiful, the colours, the light, the intensity of the waves. It's almost like it's performing uh, like a live work of art. It's, it's really, really unique in that way. Cyclops is renowned for its monster-like tubes across a deadly shallow reef. A wipeout can be fatal with the closest hospital over 200 miles away making Cyclops one of the heaviest waves to attempt in the world. Some surfers say that it's not really a surfable wave and just too dangerous. Yeah, the actual last wave I rode at Cyclops before this trip, I got smashed into the reef and I just, it's like a cheese grater, the reef, it just shredded through my foot and I had to go like rush to the hospital and get it all stitched up. It just seems like the way this coastline's set up and the way the ocean is, the depth of water just makes waves so heavy and so dangerous in the way they break on the back of these reefs. Searching for cyclops can be an almost impossible challenge. The boys hook up with local surfer Greg Spouse, who knows these waters, and travel to cyclops and beyond in search of other monster breaks. There's no big, big billabong budgets here, mate. It's just... Boys from the gutter in Maroubra have just come down here and just been looked after by the local lab divers. Just legends, just loving it. Greg is one of the first surfers to have ever surfed the crazy waves in this remote area. After travelling for hours, the boys find a gnarly left. Then they spot a right. Richie is keen to go, and without waiting, he's the first man off the boat and ready to test out this new break. Your friends should never turn away. They decide to keep searching and stumble into a few more waves, left and right. There's no crowds around here, on the edge of this surfing wilderness. Shifting winds make it difficult, and the ocean is always changing. What does it look like up close? Is it dry? Judging when to go and what's surfable and what's not is the question. <laughs> Making the wrong decision test a surfer's mind. The wipeout versus the cover shot. Can I make it? This decision will twist a surfer's mind after travelling thousands of miles and spending thousands of dollars searching and chasing.
With a declining swirl, shifting winds and low tide approaching, they return to Cyclops. Upon arrival, it's still pumping and the tide's still OK. Toe surfing is a must here. This wave would be impossible to paddle into and secure a deep tube. Your friend should never turn away. My hand is grasping for it all around. My fingertips they are slipping, falling down. My hand is grasping for it. Cheating the tube's depth is crucial for a sick cover shot. Mark knows there's a fine line between deep and too deep. He wants a big clean wave and has to choose carefully. Within minutes, Mark takes a wave and is engulfed by Cyclops. No. He returns to the lineup unscathed. Next wave, it's big, clean. Mark scores a big tube. Ted nails the cover shot. The boys are stoked again. Mark is happy he's travelled thousands of miles to meet this wave, a wave of destiny. <laughs> you love when you come out of situations like that unscathed. I love it. It's on the edge to a park. A few waves later, the ocean changes, the tide drops out, and the window closes. The wave is obviously very hard to ride it, and uh, if you want to try and get barrel on it, so and you're trying to convince yourself that, you, you know, that one could, you, you could have made that one, or, you know, that one was no good, but no, that one before, it was pretty sick, you could have made that one. And then Mark got that one, and, you know, and I was like, fuck. Oh. As he was getting with Tinder, I was just going, no, 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 like, I'm kind of way up. You could see what he was going to do, he was just going to jack and go, you know, go crazy, and all of a sudden he's just sitting there, and I was like, what's going on here? And then he just got spat out, just, like, just, just baffled. That's that 5% that's all it meant. Yeah. 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 This is still a happy song It's just a protest song